Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and being a part of the Remember the Time YouTube Hop. Each designer that you'll see listed in the de uh, description box down below will have something different, a different project for you to look at. And the um, designers, um, their link, like I said, their links are down below. Um, we all had to use the same paper uh, collection, Remember the Time, which is from Country Craft Creations. And my project is the inserts for a planner, the monthly dividers. And so um, it did end up getting pretty thick, but I only use this one for a monthly planner. So I don't have like daily pages and I just have the month and that's where I put the birthdays and stuff like that. So this is um, an A5 and so my pages um, are going to be about, they're about um, five and a fourth by eight and a fourth or pretty close to that. And so here are the 12 months. And like I said, I will just put a monthly page in between each of them. So um, January, you'll see that they, there are three different page styles um, and there's four months for each page style. Here's February. We have March. And April. May and June. I tried to pick a favorite, but I like them all, so I don't know which one I would go with. Here's July, August, September, October, November, and then finally December. So I will show you the three different page styles and how I made those. Um, you'll notice that all the fronts were the same. It's the um, backs that were a little bit different. And so um, if you stay tuned, you will, um, I'll have the tutorial following. Um, I did want to mention that with this, um, there are going to be prizes. Um, there are gift certificates, I believe, from Country Craft Creations. You'll need to ma make a comment below and hit the like button, please, and subscribe if you haven't already. But I also have this to donate um, as a prize for from me. And this was donated by Sin. Uh, she has a Etsy shop called Creative Chaos by Sin. And she asked if there was something that I used that I had purchased from her um, that I liked and I love the scissor holder. And so she created this scissor holder so that it actually holds three, the three different sizes of Tim Holtz scissors. And the scissors will come with this prize. So it's the large pair, the medium and the small, but they're all Tim Holtz and they all fit in one nice spot all together. So this prize will be for, um, for someone who's a member of Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations and commented below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. And again, look at the description box down below and make sure you visit all of the designers pages. Here we go. I thought it would be easiest to start with January and it's also the easiest um, page. So this will be for January, April, July, and then I'm also going to now do October. So let me give you some measurements. So the papers, because of the size of my planner, it wasn't exactly um, five and three fourths and it wasn't exactly um, eight and one fourth. So I took it a mark, a sixteenth of an inch wider and taller to make it fit into the, I think they call it an A5. Um, so the measurements are five and 13 sixteenths across. So I went to the uh, three fourths and went one line after. And then the length or how tall it is, is eight and five sixteenths. So I went to the one fourth and went one notch over to add that sixteenth on. So I happen to have the um, Planner Punch Board by We Are Memory Keepers. And for this, for my planner that has six rings, it's at number 11, 21, and 31. So let me show you, it might be easier. I have a pretty wide planner. Um, it's a Carpe Diem, I actually got it from Country Craft Creations. Um, and I'm making a new set of inserts. And so I have six rings. And when I looked at my punch board, the measurements were on there. So let me, what I, what I need to do then after I put it at 11, 21 and 31 
is to slide it under and then you punch and then you tip it up go well, the other direction upside down line it up and punch so obviously if you don't have this little gadget you can measure um, whatever your planner happens to be that just made it easier for me so then um, I went ahead and I then used the punch for securing the uh, holes so I wanted them on the front and the back so I had to do uh, 12 total so for October um, what am I gonna do let's see I'm gonna do these so I wanted a different color than what my base paper was going to be and I used the long I used the long strip and I did six of them on that one and then I used the short strip and did six on this one and so I'll just glue these on real quick and I'm using some old glue to get rid of it normally I use art glitter glue and just put those I thought it was best to secure these because I don't want to just use this for one year I think I want to use it for several years and so I wanted it to be kind of generic as far as dates go because I use a monthly planner the inserts will be by month so this first page doesn't have to be real specific I don't usually do a whole lot with at school I do with daily planners but I like monthly better all right and I didn't punch that one very well I'll just do then after I did the holes we're gonna put the base paper on each side And I always did the bigger pattern on the back and the smaller pattern on the front. And I do have pictures to show you, so make sure you look at those. All right. So with so many people on our design team making projects with this paper, we all had to kind of be unique and decide on something that there wasn't going to be a whole lot of overlap on. <laughs> so then after you have this page, the pattern paper that you want is going to um, measure 5 and 1 16 by 8 and 1 16th. Again, the measurements are a little bit strange, but that's because of the size of my planner. So for the front, I'm going to go ahead and use the orange. And it's going to look like so. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Glue that on. The spiders will be the back page. I thought it would be kind of silly to show doing all the same page, same layout four times. So I did the other ones ahead of time and just thought showing one would be the easiest. Okay, so you want to line that up. Okay, and go ahead and burnish that on. Catch your extra glue with a dry wet wipe. So on the first page I liked the calendar to for October, but I didn't want to use this October I wanted to use a different October in the paper collection so what I did was I just went ahead and took off the one that came with it like so and I'll save this for something else and instead I used all of these for the months so it had another border on the outside but to make it fit better I went ahead and did the interior border so I'm gonna place the month up top then I will do the calendar part 
and then I wanted a border strip and which one do I want? I used another one of the short borders and this is five and one eighth so I'll be gluing that down there like so and let me let me go ahead and get started with the gluing so I can move on to the back as soon as I'm done without having everything fall off and I think this would be a good idea for a gift also giving somebody these planner inserts I think that would be nice okay and so now the calendar now I thought originally about laminating this so that you could use a uh, dry erase marker to write the days on there but I think that would get too thick in the planner so that's why I went, didn't end up doing that but you could okay and actually I could go back and add a design in the center being I'm not using it for actual dates and then um, I'm going to go ahead and glue this down at the bottom this is three-fourths inches wide and five and one sixteenths long Okay. Now I did want to use all three of the circles. That's what I'm going to do down here. And so I used my punch. I'm pretty sure this is a one inch, but I'm not. Let me check. Oops, excuse me. No, it looks like uh, I don't have it marked. It looks like one and a half. So I'm going to punch all three of these out. And on all of them, I had the girl in the center. Uh, I, when I arranged the three circles, I always put the girl in the top center. All right, so I'm going to lay another one right next to it so that I can line everything up. As far as the circles go, I want it to be as close as possible. And I didn't do any inking around the edges this time. Normally I do, but this time I just wasn't feeling it, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this on top so I can eyeball the measurements. And I'll put the owl down. And then I'll do the next one on the other side. Once you get one done, like deciding the layout on the first one, the rest of them go really fast. It's that first one that takes a while. And then this one here. Now I can move this. And then this one will go in the center. And I know it stops at the bottom of that little diamond on the calendar. Now I did want something in these corners and so I have a bunch of different shaker pieces and so I have this Halloween mix. I'm going to de decide if I want the spiders, if I want the pumpkins. The spiders are black and the pumpkins are orange so it might be too much orange. Let's take a look. Uh, the pumpkins are actually, they look too big. I think I want spiders. So let me dig out uh, uh, four spiders, one for each corner. I love these shaker mixes. Three. And come on. There's the fourth one that's sticking to my finger okay. 
Okay. And I just put some glue on the back. And you might want these going all different directions. There's one. This one I'll have going in. I think those spiders look cute actually. And I'll have these going down. So you don't want much dimension on these pages because with 12 different dividers and having paper in between for your calendar, it would get too thick. So we had to make sure we kept this pretty flat. Now I do have a bow to put on here. Where did I put it? Um, hold on. Oh, there it is. And all of them that I had have a little bow at the bottom and they have a little pearl in the center. And so I am going to put this on down here at the bottom. So it looks like so. But I'm not going to glue that on yet because when I work on the back that pearl kind of gets in the way. So I'm going to just leave that off to the side and I'll come back and do that uh, in a minute. So on this side I want the opposite pattern. And so that's my spiders and again it's five and one sixteenth by eight and one sixteenth so I'm going to go ahead and glue that down first the spiders hanging down so I guess I can show you up close so these this was also from a shaker mix and those are little uh, snowflakes April was from a shaker mix and it's like little peppermint candies but they're pink and white and then July I had little blue stars from a shaker mix and then the spiders for this one okay so on this one i wanted a picture so i'm going to put a four and one fourth by four and one fourth mat and then i'm going to use a four by four paper from the other side so i'm going to glue those together so black mat was four and a fourth the center pattern paper is four by four and again i want things pretty much lined up as like the other ones so i'm going to turn one of my pages upside down so that I can line this up and I want it about right there it looks like okay it's kind of like doing mini scrapbook pages like I used to do like layouts it's kind of fun this one was the one I started with because it's been a while since I've done layouts and so the other ones I wanted to add a little bit more something different to them so that they're not all the same now this is a card that just comes out. I made this little, um, it's like a pocket. I just glued it on three sides and the ticket part is open so that you can slide a picture under it. So. All right, so I cut a one inch by five and one sixteenth piece that's gonna go across here. And then I want a center piece that is three fourths inches. And I don't like that. That's too similar. What about. Maybe I'll do this one. Or actually, I could do. Nope, I'm going to do this one. 
So I'm going to cut this at three and a f uh, one fourth. Oh, excuse me, uh, three fourths inches uh, in width, and then um, what did I go? Four and three fourths for this direction. So let me cut that real quick. I don't want to cut off the girl. Oh, that's not even straight. Let me straighten that out a little bit. And three fourths inches wide is what I'm looking for. Okay, and four and three, was it four and three fourths? I don't want to give you the wrong measurements. Yep, four and three fourths. Okay. So I'm going to glue this and center it on the black piece. Now I probably should have put on the hole enforcers first, but I think it'll be okay. I have plenty of room. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick so I don't, just to make sure that I don't forget or lose these little pieces. Oh yeah, no problem. And this is optional, obviously, but if I plan on using it year after year, I thought it would be a good idea to do it on both sides. So I am anxious to see what the other designers came up with. I know some are probably doing folios or desk calendars. This paper you could use for a lot of different things. boxes, storage boxes for each month, like for pictures. And last one. Okay, that gives it a more finished look too. So now I'm going to line these up so I can glue the pocket. This um, I just did it on three sides so that I could put the cutout in the back. So on three sides I put glue. And it looks like it's about right there. All of them I did this shape of the cutout and I matted it on black paper. This one's hard to tell because it had a black border anyway, but maybe on this one you can see it better. So I matted, um, put it on black paper and then I just glued it in the center. So I just put glue right here in the middle and then center it on the pocket. And then your cutout will kind of just kind of go off to the side. And two tickets. So I need to decide which two. This might blend in too much. So I might need to do a black and an orange. Or a black. I think that looks best. So then I just glued one on top of the other. Like 
like so. And when you glue it down in the corner, I'm going to glue down the black one, but not this uh, top one, so that you can put a picture behind it. stick this in here like so all right now I can go back and place that little bow down in the center here and then that's how you do the page style one and you just have to hold that for a second maybe I'll set this on top or not. Nope. Just have to leave it alone. So there's October. This was July. This was April. And January. Okay. Let's move on to page style two. Okay, we're going to do page style two next. Um, there are four months that have this style also, February, May, August, and then November. So you'll notice that I did all the fronts the same as the other style. I did go back and add some of the extra ephemera pieces just to kind of give it some color. And I'm not going to use it for a real calendar on this one anyway, so it was okay to cover up those boxes. Um, so the back then has a side pocket and I put some of the uh, cutouts on the side here on the pocket and I matted the ticket, uh, the tag on black paper. Have two tickets underneath this. This is another photo mat. Um, so, cause I did, this style didn't have a place for me to put one. And then I have the cutout and I just have a paper clip right now to hold that. So that's February, May, again, same style on the front. On the back then, here's that tag, the cutout with the two tickets, a photo mat along with that cutout that has the lines on it and a paper clip. And then August, the same. Okay, so we're going to do November together. So I know the measurements are weird, but we had to go with, uh, I had to go with what works best in my planner. So this one is actually 7 and 13 sixteenths. Oh, that's really hard to see, huh? Uh, by 9 and 5 sixteenths. Why can't I get that? There we go. So um, for the 13 sixteenths, it's one line past the 3 fourths. And then for the 9 and 5 sixteenths, it's one line past the 1 fourth, if that helps. So you're going to place the 9 and 5 sixteenths across the top. You are going to score at one half. Turn it around and do one half. And then place it the other direction so the 7 and 13 sixteenths is across the top. But then I move it over to the right hand side because I want a 2 inch pocket. And so to me it's just easier because we're going to be doing some cutting of these to go to the 10 inch. So move it to the right hand side of your scoreboard and go to the 10 inch. Take your scissors and you're going to cut a V where the lines intersected. So a V right there. And then I'm going to angle or miter the other end like so. And I'm going to do that to the other side. So I'm angling it on each side of the score mark. And then I'm going to angle at the top. Okay. So because I don't cut as straight as I would like, I'm going to get my cutter and show you how to trim off the one half inch pieces. Uh, 
Okay. So you're going to cut off this one half inch section on both sides, here and here. So I just look to see that it's in the channel in the correct spot. Okay. So took off that half inch. Now I'm going to do the other side. So that is what you have left. Now we can burnish the score marks. And fold in those tabs and um, burnish those. I think I said score, but I meant burnish. And make sure that it lines up nice. And this one looks a little bit off, so. Okay, and then we're gonna glue down those half inch tabs. Oopsie. put glue on this half inch tab and then bring it over and let me get that dry wet wipe so that will give us our pocket now the pocket goes to the back so now when we do our punch it was at 11, 21, and 31. Let me make sure it's still in the right spot. Yep. So I'm going to line that up. It's on the opposite side of the pocket. And then I'm going to do the same on the other end. So just like we did on the other pieces, this is five and one sixteenth by eight and one sixteenth. I'm going to lay that down after I do the um, hole punches or the enforcers. Again, I used this as the enforcer. You'll need six on the front and six on the back. So let me glue these on real quick. Just line those up on the holes. Okay, and I'm gonna do all six. So I went ahead and put the hole enforcers on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. This, like I said, all the fronts are the same. Some people don't like that. I kind of like the consistency. So again, five and one sixteenth by eight and one sixteenth for this one. And this time I didn't ink the edges. I normally do, but not on these. I don't know why, but I just chose not to. It goes faster, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, so now again, I'm gonna use this calendar, but I am gonna cut off that top piece. to use the other November instead. Now I do cut off this outside edge and I'm just going on the outside of that burgundy color. It fits a little bit better. So I'm going to trim around the outside of that one. And 
and I think it kind of stands out a little bit more on the paper. So let's go ahead and start gluing it down. I put it from about an eighth of an inch from the top. Okay, I just kind of eyeball it. And then I put about another eighth of an inch between the November and the grid. Took one of the border strips and cut it to three fourths by five and one sixteenth, and that's going to go down at the bottom. And I kind of line it up with this bottom hole. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the one and a half inch circle punch for the three circles. So because of the way the colors are, I want the burgundy one in the center. I think it'll look better. And then have the other two on this side like so. So let me go ahead and put glue. When I put these circles on, it's about an inch from each end. And then I just center it top and bottom. And I do the other one. About an inch from the end. And then when I glue the turkeys on, I put it to the bottom of that little diamond shape. Okay. And then I'll put a bow here, like I did on the other one, and then I'll find four little things to put on the corner. I don't know what I'm going to put on there quite yet. So then on the other side, oh, I guess I could finish the front like I did the other ones. So I'm going to put one of the tags, one of the tickets. Mm, I think I want this. And then one of the cutouts for the side here. So I'd lay down the tick the tag first. So this project again is to showcase the paper. It's not really a complex project at all, but it's handy and practical. Everything you need will be in the paper pack. And I still have plenty left over, so I can make another project. I'm just going to angle that. And then I'll place this one on the edge. Like so. All right, so there's that one. Then on the back, I'm going to do the reverse paper. So this measures three and a half by eight and one sixteenth, and that's going to go on the outside uh, underneath the pocket. So 
So three and a half by eight and one sixteenth. Slide that underneath your pocket, line it up top and bottom and right up against the hole enforcers. Then I took a one and seven eighths inch by eight and one sixteenth. I'm going to place that on the pocket. So I go uh, an eighth of an inch smaller on my matting. lined up nice. So then I took, um, what do I need next? I need a tag and I'm going to mat that on black paper and I'll go ahead and I'm missing one thing. I don't, oh, this is what I'm missing. So I'm going to take this one and mat it on black, and this one and mat it on black. And then I'll have the two tickets that go to the behind here. And then this is going to be at the top with the paper clip. And then I'm going to put my mat and stick that under there. So the mat, the black is four and one fourth by four and a fourth. And the pattern paper is four by four. I wanted a place for a picture for each month. And this is the only style that I didn't actually put it on the page itself. So it's just going in the pocket. Okay, so let me mat the ticket or the tag and this little piece of ephemera. All right, so I went ahead and matted the two pieces, the tag and the other piece of ephemera on black. And I just put glue on one side here and lay it up against the pocket. Press that down. I'm going to take these two and glue one on top of the other. And then I'm going to glue that underneath that right there. So I'll just put glue on the top here. And I just kind of center it. And then I'll put glue on the piece that's going to be on the pocket. And like so. And I'll place that paper clip on there just so I don't lose it. Like that. So that's how you do all of those. I am going to go back, like I said, and put the bow and then the corner pieces. I just don't know what I'm going to use yet. And so now there is the last page style. The last uh, page design looks like this. So again, the front's the same. This time there's a pocket on the bottom instead of on the side. And this is open so that there, I didn't want as much bulk. So I'll show you how I'm going to cut that so it doesn't get too bulky. And then it has a place for a picture here. And then this is, I uh, turn this into a little pocket and just put one of the tags in there. So that was uh, March. This is June. Like so. And this is September. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and get our paper ready. So this, again, it's kind of a weird measurement, but it's six and five sixteenths by 12. And we are going to score with the six and five sixteenths across the top. We're gonna to score at one half. Okay. So then the next part, because my scoreboard doesn't have the exact measurements that it should, I am going to measure eight and one sixteenth. No, how long, tall are these pages? Um, they are eight and five sixteenths. So I need to measure eight and five sixteenths and put a little tally so that I can see where to score it. So eight, four, five, it's the first line after the fourth mark. And then I'll put that in the scoreboard and just kind of move it around a little bit till it gets to the right spot and it looks about right there. And I will score that if I can find my scoring tool. I just had it. Oh, there it is. Okay, and then that's all the scoring. So let's do the same thing we did with the other one where we have the two score marks that meet. We're going to cut at an angle on each side and so we're going to cut out a little triangle. Okay, and then I'm going to angle it off at the top. And now we need to cut this away. So we just have this short tab here. This one uh, half inch will be gone. So I'm going to go ahead and get my cutter. And half inch. And we are going to score or burnish, excuse me, and then burnish the tab. So you want the tab on the right hand side, just so you know that's how we're going to avoid some of that bulk. And then we are going to glue that down just this one side. We don't need to do the other side because it'll be on the uh, rings and so it will stay shut. And I'll just bring that up and over. Burnish that down and didn't dry enough. All right, and I have a little piece that I need to trim off here. Okay, so now the holes, the um, part that's open down here. That's going to go on the right hand side. And so I'm going to place this like so. And let's see if we can go through two. And we did. Barely, but we did. Okay. So now we're going to place the hole protectors 
we'll do six on the front. Now on the back, you want to put them on the outside of the pocket, not on the inside, but obviously on the outside right here. All right, I went ahead and put the hole protectors on. And here is the piece that will go on the front. It is five and one sixteenth by eight and one sixteenth. So this is the third time you've seen this layout put together. Burnish that on real well. All right, so here is the calendar piece. Here's the December with the trim, um, the very outer trim cut off, just went to the inside one. Eighth of an inch down. Then we put the calendar on. Space it about an eighth of an inch from the December. Oops. I took a three fourths by five and one sixteenth piece for the border strip. three circles I like that one there this one here that one there so let's do those next about an inch from each end for the out, outer circles outer ones first and then I do the center one last and then this one goes to the triangle or the diamond on the calendar piece Now we're going to take the tag and place that at an angle. Take the ticket and which one do I want? Yeah, that goes with that, so I'll put this one on there. Put that at an angle. And then this will go on the side.
Okay, now just like before, I'm going to find, I have some, I think, peppermint that I'll put here on the four corners and then my bow here. So the back now, this needs to be five and one sixteenth also, um, but we are going to cut it. Let's see. Yeah. Let's cut this so that it is five inches. And we'll glue this down like so. And we want the stripes to line up, so that's why we cut it in one long piece first. So I started off with the 5 and 1 16th by 12 because I want my stripes to line up. So then I took off 5 inches for the back. So now the bottom piece, we're going to make that three and one half. And then we want to make sure, is this the right one, that it lines up nice and neat. up the stripes. Okay, take your black piece that's four and a fourth by four and a fourth and we're going to take a four by four pattern one and put it on top. down, center it. I think I want that darker piece down at the bottom like that. Now this does end up being kind of a thick um, planner, but my planner is pretty thick, so um, it might be that you just want to do one page style instead of all three, maybe just the flat one, just whatever works for your book. And then now um, I had two tickets off to the side here. like so, and you don't want to glue them all the way down. You want them to be able to put a picture underneath. So I'll just attach these two. Like so. And then I'll just put glue on the edge here. And I think I'll put some on, on the bottom like that. Okay, hold that down till it's dry. This is going to go inside here. On this one, we take the larger ticket and I'm going to glue it sideways. 
and on three sides only so that you can put a tag in there. And then you're going to put the tag coming out like so. And that's it for that. So then, like I said, I'll go back and put in the bows. And so now I'll show you them all laid out all together. Okay, I'll show them to you by three. So here's January, February, March. Then I'll go ahead and turn them over so you can see the backs also. Okay, there's those three. Oops. So let's do April, May, June. They're nice and springy looking. Okay, and then the backs of those. And July, August, September on the other side. And we have October. November and December and on the other side. Ta-da! Well, I hope you are enjoying this um, YouTube hop for Remember the Time. You go ahead and look down in my description box so you can see which other designers you need to go to for their YouTube channel. Um, please like and subscribe if you have not already. Uh, we love comments also. There are prizes that are available. And so um, I want to make sure that you know that um, this is sponsored by Country Craft Creations. And not only are there going to be winners for um, Country Craft Creations, but I also have a um, separate prize. Let me move these off to the side. So um, it was donated um, by Creative Chaos by Sin, and she has an Etsy shop, and she graciously donated this prize. So it is a scissor holder, and it does hold three pair of scissors, and they're large size scissors, and they're Tim Holtz, so they are nice scissors. Here's the Tim Holtz, the large size, and that goes in the back pocket. Here's the Tim Holtz middle size. And here's the Tim Holtz small snip scissors. So how nice to have all three of those fit into one. And then it has a snap closure. And anytime you have to go to a crop, you've got all three of them together. So this will be the prize that I give away for a comment that's listed below. And if you're a member of Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, um, I'll put a random do the random uh, generator and see who is the lucky winner of this. And so you'll want to check back and see if you are that lucky person. So thank you so much for being a participant in this hop. And I hope you enjoy the projects and that you find that you make some. And if you do, please post those on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. Thank you so much, everybody.